Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Meet at Digital Days. My name is Lisa Richter, and I will moderate this presentation. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our virtual conference. The topic of this presentation is Frequency Products Introduction of New Products. Our speaker is Susanna Engel. She will hold the presentation and will answer your questions. Before we start, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during the presentation. This means that you cannot ask questions via microphone during the presentation. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the presentation at any time via the chat function. You will find the chat function in the control panel. This presentation will be about 15 minutes long. The chat questions will be answered in the Q&A sessions following the webinar. There are five minutes in addition scheduled for this. If you are unable to answer all of your questions within this time, we will answer them via email afterwards. If you still have any other questions, left just, left, just mail us at exhibition at we-online.com. We will try to answer all of your questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you'll be asked to participate in a feedback survey. We would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to improve our event. You'll receive the, the link to the presentation in the next few days. The recording will be available at our website shortly. So, now I will hand over to our speaker. Hello, herzlich willkommen and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Susanna Engel and I'm uh, happy uh, to welcome you in my home office today, except um, I would love to see you in person, but uh, this is the best that we can get so far. Um, I'm still happy um, that we uh, can have this today. Um, and a big thank you to Lisa and her team for um, doing all of this. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's a long time I had a presentation. Uh, so uh, please bear with me. <laughs> um, today I'm going to show you the latest products we have in our frequency product portfolio. Um, and I hope you already had the time to uh, listen to Sarah Muschitz, who had the slot before, and told you a little bit of the um, problems and advantages of downsizing of crystals. Looking into the products, I'm going to show you our newest clock oscillator we have in the work portfolio, as well as one of our new atomic clocks and a standard SPXO with some very nice um, features as well. So let's start with the presentation. The first uh, product I want to introduce is the IQX 618, 623 and 624, which is just since November available via Worf Electronic. These standard package crystal oscillators um, are the first ones with LVDS and LVPECL output we have at the Worf portfolio. This output makes it ideally suited for the increasing amount of data transmission and um, data um, uh, quantity. It comes in the standard package size of 3.2 by 2.5 millimeter, and we do have uh, both 2.5 volt and 3.3 by volt versions in our portfolio. Um, another special thing on this is that the standard temperature range we are offering is minus 40 to 105 degree. In this temperature range, the um, IQX 618, 623 and 624 offer 50 ppm stability with the tolerance included as well. We currently have um, three uh, frequencies available from stock at Wolf Electronics, which are 100 megahertz, 125 megahertz, and 156.25 megahertz. These are the most common frequencies we see in these kind of markets, um, and we hope that it suits your needs. Um, these uh, kind of oscillators with LVDS and LVPECL outputs um, are especially suited for, um, for uh, low noise applications because they have a better jitter and noise performance than CMOS outputs. As already mentioned, ideally for um, high amount of data and fast data transmission, like in gigabit ethernet and fiber channels and um, similar applications. 
The next product I want to introduce is the IQX0951. These are the far, far only available via IQD frequency products. Um, the special thing on these ones is they do have a variable supply voltage. Um, so the complete voltage range is from 1.6 to uh, 3.6 volt, um, which is perfectly for all kind of battery powered applications. Usually an oscillator is calibrated and specified to a fixed um, voltage. And once the voltage drops below the specified, which is usually plus minus 5% or plus minus 10%, and once it drops below that value, um, the oscillator can lose its accuracy, which is definitely nothing you want to see in your application. Um, therefore, with this kind of application, um, just um, if you can imagine your battery loses its um, its power, at one point in time, it will probably drop below the, um, the necessary voltage. And in this case, it doesn't matter because the oscillator still can handle it and will still work with the specified accuracy. Uh, we do offer this one as well with uh, minus 40 to 85 or minus 40 to 125 degree temperature ranges. Um, it's uh, a set perfectly for all kinds of battery powered applications like Internet of Things, wearable, consumer applications, portable industry applications, or stuff like that. It also um, gives you the opportunity to reduce your bomb. Uh, we do have these in three different sizes, the standard 3.2 by 2.5, which is still the most common and most um, uh, preferred one. And also, of course, like you just hopefully heard, downsizing is um, ongoing more and more. So we also offer 2.5 by 2.0 and 2.0 by 1.6 millimeter packages. There is one special port for the IQX0951, which is the uh, 25TS, whereby the TS stands for tight stability. Uh, so this one um, offers you not only the variable supply voltage, but also a perfect stability of down to 5 ppm of a minus 40 to 85 degree. Uh, so it's even close to a T6O performance, of course a bad T6O performance, um, but all of that packaged in a standard uh, crystal oscillator and also for the price of an SPXO and not of a T6O. Uh, so another chance probably for you to save some money on your bomb. The applications are still the same, all kind of battery powered stuff. And last but not least, I want to introduce our um, newest addition to the rubidium and atomic clocks, which is the ICPT1. This is again also only available at IQD at the moment. And, um, it's uh, in the chip scale atomic clock size, so it's it's pretty small, as you can see, 45 by 45 by 14.5 millimeter, which is uh, indeed for um, atomic clock pretty small. It uses it uses the current popula population trap method, um, which uh, means it uh, has a different kind of way to um, to excite the atoms internally. And um, it comes with only 3.3 volts. So it's uh, also pretty low in power consumption for an atomic clock. Um, as you can see, the short-term stability is typically 0.02 PBB at the tower of 100 seconds. And the long-term stability, so the aging is only 0.03 PBB per day. Per day. So it is really ideally um, suited for all kinds of synchronization and timing synchronization applications. It can be used as a timing reference. It also offers um, the, the uh, possibility to input a one PPS synchronization signal, or it can use the internal clock and offer a good holdover once you might lose your signal. Um, therefore, it can be used as a timing reference in all kinds of timing um, 
timing um, applications where really timing is um, critical, like financial security, utility, but also within your industrial uh, measurement systems, this can be used as a reference. With the ICPT1, we uh, include something new into our general rubidium portfolio, which we do have at IQD. Um, so far, we already had the IQRB1, which is also one of the smaller standard rubidiums with a size of 50 by 50 by 25 uh, and works with a standard 12 wall uh, input. Um, we do have the IQRB2 and IQRB3, which are bigger in size, but um, better in low phase no or in phase noise, and do have some other advantages as well. Um, the IQRB3 also offers the one PPS synchronization input. And uh, finally, what is coming soon, uh, so it will be in January when we are pleased to announce the IQRB4, which will close the gap between the IQRB1, 2, and 3, and the ICPT1 with a 5 volt version and additional CMOS in, uh, output, and again, a 1 PPS synchronization input. So this was it from my side for the new products, and I'm looking forward now to your questions. So thank you, Susanna, for your interesting presentation. Now, just take a look at the questions here. Um, just a second. So here's the first question. What is the difference between this new ICPT1 and other rubidium clocks? Can you give an answer here? Okay. Yeah, so the, the main difference is the, the way they um, excite the atoms internally. So while at a, a standard rubidium, there is a, a rubidium lamp, which is used to, to excite the atoms. Um, so to use that properly, the um, rubidium lamp is heated to a high temperature, which has a, a bad influence on the lifetime um, because uh, everyone working in electronics knows um, a, a lot of temperature just speeden up the aging of all kind of electronics. So this is a big disadvantage of a standard rubidium whereby at the ICPT1 there is a laser used to excite the atoms. On the other side, um, the ICPT1 is internally using a T6O while in rubidium, standard rubidium uses an O6O, uh, which is the reason why the ICPT1 only requires 3.3 volt and requires a lot less power than the standard rubidiums. Okay, I hope great. that answers the question. Yes, I think so. Um, just one attendee asked if this um, ICPT1 is um, just in IQD portfolio or will it be also in the standard for both electronic portfolio? No. So there are currently no plans to include that to the WORF portfolio as well. Um, one of the reasons is, of course, uh, at WORF Electronic, we do have um, more or less the requirement to ourselves to offer everything we do have from stock. And as our atomic clocks are quite expensive, it would be a big uh, investment. So for now, and we are only offered the rubidiums from IQD. Okay, great, thank you. So there's one more. Um, for the LVDS oscillators, are there also other frequencies available? Yes, um, so for now, on the one side, we do have the three frequencies on stock at Wolf Electronics, but of course, other frequencies are possible, um, but very likely they will be only available with a standard eight weeks lead time and not from stock. And yeah, depending on the frequency and the quantities, it will be either available via IQD or will be added to the Wolf portfolio. Okay, great. And I think the last question, how can you save money by using these variable supply voltage oscillators? Okay, there are various uh, ways to, to uh, save money. Um, so on one point with the IQXR951, you can replace several oscillators using a fixed supply voltage by only using one. 
So instead of having an oscillator with 1.8 volt, one with 2.5 volt, and one in 3.3 volt over your whole portfolio, you can now only have one. So the first possibility to save money is, of course, to um, get all the quantities together and already decrease the pricing when you buy them. But additionally, it will save you a lot of handling time and money, like uh, starting with, with shipping, with getting goods in, getting goods out. Uh, goods out at uh, pick and place, you only have one wheel instead of various wheels that you might need to change. Um, you do have less administrative work because you only have one part number in your system instead of three. Um, you have only one part to have on stock, so also inventory um, money will will decrease. Um, so overall, um, this this are or this can save you uh, some money doing your complete um, chain on processes from buying till the end. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Susanna. Um, if there are any questions left, we will answer them via email afterwards. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Um, so hopefully we see us tomorrow and yes, have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.